Hi, I'm James McGuire, and today we're talking about enterprise security, including backup and zero trust. To discuss that, I'm, I'm joined by Bapal Sinha, co-founder and CEO of Rubrik. Bapal, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, James, for the opportunity. Really excited. And, you know, I want to note right up front that, that Rubrik was named a 2021 Gartner Magic Quadrant Leader in the enterprise backup and recovery sp space. So I, I give you kudos for that, Bapal. Thank you so much. Uh, as you can imagine, we have been hard at work with respect to how to deliver the world-class uh, backup and recovery platform that helps customers recover from ransomware, recover from operational failure, recover from disasters. And uh, what you see in Gartner is many years of hard work, both in terms of building new product and executing in the marketplace where we are acquiring very large customers at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up the idea of ransomware. I think that's a really fascinating idea because it seems like there's a way for companies to avoid having to deal with a ransomware criminal if only they're properly set up. I mean, is, is, there, a, is there a proper way? What, what is the proper way so that if, if a company has this, this, and this in place, they simply do not need to worry about ransomware at all? Or ultimately, is there really no way around it currently? Explain that to me, please. Absolutely. So if you think about the enterprise security overall, in the last 15, 20 years, there has been a lot of focus on into the prevention and detection of cyber attacks, including mm -hmm. ransomware. Right. But what people have realized that the, the attacks have gotten sophisticated, very large uh, state sponsored criminals are out there and they have taken a foothold in almost all the large enterprises. And it is not the question of if, it is the question of when those footholds get activated and, and you have a, a data exfiltration issue, ransomware issue. So right. the question is that now that these attacks are socially engineered and they figure out a way to get in, how do we react to these attacks? That, that, and, that, is, that is indeed the question. And I'm hoping your answer is, Oh, just do X, X, and X, and you'll never need to worry about it. Absolutely. And that's where I was coming to. So I was saying that you need to have a very strong assessment and remediation strategy. Okay. Typical backup and recovery was designed, the legacy backup of recovery was designed for operational failure and disaster recovery. That was not, they were not designed for uh, cyber disasters such as ransomware. Right. So right. there, the legacy backup is failing. Uh, because what we hear is that two out of the three ransomware attack attacks the backup first. Uh -huh. That's okay. where rubric comes in. You need a high quality backup that is immune to ransomware architecturally, that is built on zero trust principle that NIST and White House is advocating. And that's what rubric delivers. Rubric delivers a zero trust backup recovery platform that is immune to ransomware that has the ability to calculate the blast radius of, of attack for a quick assessment and then deliver rapid recovery. Well, so I, I, I wanna get into zero trust, definitely. And I, I hear, you know, there's zero trust is so big these days, it's really an ascendant technology. Uh, but you're saying really the answer is as simple as institute a zero trust, uh, you know, technology that, that's, that's gonna do it for you. If, if you have zero trust, you don't have to worry about ransomware? That's true, because what happens is that traditional uh, network design, product design, uh, the, the backup and recovery design is not based on zero trust, because uh -huh. folks are writing backup over open network protocols. And when you have open network protocol, it is vulnerable. Rubrik for the first time created a zero trust architecture by creating this fully authenticated stack for backup and recovery. And when you have a fully authenticated stack where every component is talking to each other through fully authenticated architecture, mm -hmm. now you have, uh, you have reduced or removed the probability of external agent mucking around with your data, locking mm -hmm. the data, exfiltrating the data. And okay. that's why zero trust is so important. So, all right, just to be clear, and I, I, I wouldn't doubt the quality of Rubrik's solution, but you're saying really a zero trust would do it. You're not, you're not saying that only Rubrik's zero trust would do it. There are other zero trust solutions out there. If zero trust is the ultimate answer to ransomware, then the companies consider them, ah, I've got a shop for a zero trust solution. 
But there are indeed other zero trust solutions out there that would stop ransomware in your view. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of zero trust focus into the prevention and detection realm. Rubrik mm -hmm. is, the, is the only company that is delivering zero trust in terms of the data management, in terms of backup and recovery. Okay. So, all right, let's, let's look at zero trust itself. I mean, I know that obviously, you know, the, the castle and moat technology, I mean, that, that, that scenario is really outdated. Let's take a look at zero trust. I think people generally know what it is, but let's do a short definition. What is zero trust and, and why is it then going to prevent ransomware or, or other serious attacks? So what happens, what at the highest level in a most simplified manner, zero trust says that every component in your infrastructure should be fully authenticated. You don't mm -hmm. trust things just because they live in your environment. And you inside and outside, right? Not, not just outside the, the, the moat, but even inside the organization. Even inside the moat. Yes, even right. inside the moat. So you have to assume that every, the whole world is compromised and I can't trust you till I verify. Right. And, and if you look at the legacy architecture of backup and recovery, it was not built that way. It was built a backup software component writing into a storage target or open storage protocol. Mm -hmm. And that is the point of vulnerability. Rubik eliminated that vulnerability by removing the, the network storage component altogether by creating a single software that is a fully authenticated zero trust architecture. It's kind of, you know, amazing when you think about it, that that classic, you know, old fashioned security method didn't really acknowledge the fact there could be rogue actors inside the organization. It seems like it's, it's, it's one of the first things you might think about, but it didn't properly didn't properly guard against that reality. The, the interesting part is that the, the whole cyber attack, instead of just being a technical attack, it has become a psychological attack. Right. Definitely. And that, that psych, you can't like prevent against people's psychology because right. you, you see an offer for a nice cruise before you can have deep thinking and think that it is <laughs> sent to you by some <laughs> actor that is trying to get into your network. You click. Right. And even if one person clicks in a thousand people organization, boom, you are there. Right. So, right. so that's why it's not the question of if, it's not the question of completely blocking uh, the, the front door. And our whole uh, thesis is that at the end of the day, all the security technology is out there to, to protect your crown jewel. Mm -hmm. And crown jewel is your data. Data right. is your IP. Totally. And, and what you have to do is you have to buy all the prevention and detection technology because you don't want to live on the freeway and open your door to the freeway. So you want to have all sorts of protection. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the ultimate protection is at the point of data. And, and, right. and, and are, do you have a, a, a zero trust technology that delivers data protection at the point of data? Let's take a look at, at, at where we are in the, in, the, in the modern world in terms of cloud adoption. I mean, obviously, multi-cloud is really becoming the dominant scenario. I think I, I read this report where companies are using, I think it's 3.2 clouds on average. So really multi-cloud is not, is not coming. It's really here now. I mean, what are the particular security challenges for, for, for the multi-cloud world? So if you look at the, the security model for the cloud, it's a shared responsibility model. The mm -hmm. cloud providers provide APIs and security capabilities, and then you buy third-party solution and software to complement and then through a shared security model, you drive the operating security model across cloud. Mm -hmm. But the complexity is that you have your applications and data sitting on different clouds and different clouds have different security uh, infrastructure and paradigm. Right. How right. do you create a single security principle across all the cloud? How do you create a policy driven data management, secure data management across all the cloud. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where Rubrik focuses on. Our policy-driven secure data management, zero trust architecture ensures that wherever your data lives, whether they live on premises, they live across multiple cloud, is secure, accessible by the right user at the right mm -hmm. time on the right platform. 
What, what if a, a company is struggling with security, either either in their multi-cloud deployment or just throughout their organization, and, and they say to you, but Paul, what, what, what are two or three recommendations you give us to, to, to do better, a better job with their security? What, what advice might you give them? So number one advice is to audit mm. every piece of the infrastructure to make sure that you right. adhere to zero trust principles. Mm. Just because something sits in your, under, in your moat is, is not, you can't assume that to be secure. So right. you have to do audit. And then you have to have capabilities that, did, that is able to compute the assessment faster. If something bad happens, do you have ability to assess very, very quickly instead of hours and days? Mm -hmm. Do you have technology that can show you what got impacted? And then mm -hmm. do you have the ability to deliver recovery fastest? Hmm. And, and because I, in my mind, assessment and remediation is the answer. So I think you, you were going to give a number of steps, audit, audit to be sure. Did, did, did I miss another step in there? So, so is audit, there... Is the, audit is the number one. Yes. And capabilities, so audit to ensure that everything is zero trust. Right. And then, then assessment capabilities within the organization. Got you. All right. You need, you need all those pieces. Interesting. Let, let's take a look at, at the future of enterprise backup and, and even enterprise backup slash security. I mean, I'm thinking that, or I hope in, in, the, in this very idealistic view of the world I have, that we're going to get to this point where it's going to be highly automated and streamlined. So we're not going to have to really worry about backup and we're really not going to worry about security that much because it's all automated and, and it'll be boosted by artificial intelligence. So by the year, you know, 2026, we won't even be talking about backup and security because it's really all automated with an AI boost. Is, is, that a, is that world going to come to pass? I mean, what, what, what do you see when you look at the future, say, five years out for enterprise backup and security? See, the thing is that uh, ideally you want that. Ideally, you want full automation so that when you provision an application, you get security, you get data protection, uh -huh. everything combined so that you don't have to worry about these things. But right. in practice, as the complexity and number of application and digitization and surface area is increasing, as right. the innovation increases, that's an ideal state, but we'll not get even close to that right. in, in, in the next five years. I think what we'll see in the next five years is, is we'll learn how to apply these principles, whether it's zero trust data management, uh, prevention detection uh, securities, to the right application based on policy driven platform there will be a lot of innovation in terms of how do you use machine learning mm. to actually do triaging mm -hmm. because today the triaging is a huge problem because mm -hmm. number of incidents and number of alerts that is coming our way is far exceeds the number of people we can hire who can triage so right. machine is the answer so so policy driven machine policy driven management automation and uh, AI ML to do triaging and understanding of the issue and then involving human on the most critical issue. Hmm. These are, there will be a lot of innovation in that space. But the security and ransomware and, and how you make data and application available, these problems uh, are going to get solved, but not completely. You know, I, you talk about getting help from the system, getting help from a machine learning algorithm. Um, it is a, I don't know about what my question is exactly. It seems like it's it's always possible to fool the machine. You can certainly fool the human as well. But if you but the machine, in a sense, no matter how sophisticated the machine or the algorithm is, it is foolable because the machine goes in a certain predictable pattern. So so the hacker can go, oh, the machine goes that way. I'm going to go this way. I mean, is it is it possible to program an algorithm so they still can never be fooled by a hacker? So that that's why the rule based system is not working because hackers can go around the rule. That's why you right. want learning system, system that learns and adopts and evolves. And right. that's why uh, machine learning is critical in, in solving cybersecurity problem. So even mm -hmm. if you look at rubric, what we did was for us to detect anomaly in the backup stream, we built an AI ML platform called Radar that automatically figures out the impact so that when you get attacked, it'll tell you what server and what files got impacted. Mm -hmm. So you need, uh, machine intelligence applied to assessment 
apply right. to threat detection, threat hunting, apply to figuring out what alert that you get is important or not. So, so you need like machine augmented and as the algorithms learns with by experience, by seeing how they circumvent the rules, then, mm -hmm. then it actually gets better and better at catching them. Obviously okay. this is going to be a cat and mouse game. And that's why I was right. saying the five years will not solve it, but we'll make a lot of progress. Hmm. You know, but Paul, you, you you said a lot of good stuff. Anything else you'd like to add? What, what's something that we, we definitely need to know about either either enterprise backup or security? What's what, what, what's what's one more important thought? So, I mean, at the end, I will say is that this whole data backup and recovery and security is really converging. Mm, because, right. Because data and data security is the key issue for every organization in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and to solve that challenge, you need to have security at the point of data. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the whole zero trust data management that Rubrik pioneered, and that's what we are actually selling in the marketplace, shows mm -hmm. where the technology is headed because these security and, and data management cannot live in the isolation. So right. IT ops and SecOps will come together. Data and security will converge and data will tell you what attacks are happening. That's the way we are headed in future. I, that, that makes perfect sense. That's a really interesting thought. All right. Uh, but Paul, thank you very much for uh, sharing your expertise today. It was, it was interesting. I definitely learned something. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, James, for this opportunity. It was great talking to you. Much appreciated.